Good morning, friends. We're just letting our chickens out for the day. We've had such nice weather that they can still go out in free range every day. There you go. I'm just heading out to milk our cow, Penelope, so I'm just going to get her some grain. I always give her grain either during or after milking as a treat so that she associates milking with a positive experience. I haven't shown you guys much of the pigs lately, but um, we're just finishing up our breeding season here. So these girls will be having piglets in February, March-ish. The girl in the back there riding the other pig is in heat. She got bred yesterday by our boar, so hopefully she took. But yeah, these guys have been all getting bred and hopefully should all be pregnant and we'll have lots of babies in the spring. Our fingers are crossed for a much, much better breeding season than we had last year. Anyways, we are just getting over a cold of some kind. Our whole family got sick again. Story of my life. I feel like we're always sick. So that's not been super fun, but we're just getting over that. Our hands have started laying really well again, so we are getting quite a few more eggs now, which is awesome. We put a light in the coop in the winter. We do give them a break to molt in the fall for like a month or two, but after a while I always get sick of it and I start wanting eggs again. So they are back in production, thankfully. Okay, you might be curious what I feed our dairy cow for grain. So I give her two scoops of a mixture of peas, barley, and a little bit of wheat. Honestly, I just use the exact same grain for all of our animals on the farm. So our cows, pigs, and chickens all get the same thing. And then I just supplement it as needed. So she gets about 10 pounds of grain every day right now. Um, and then I give her this specially formulated mineral mix. Sprinkle a little bit of that. Don't mind my feed shed. It's also a storage shed for a bunch of other stuff and it is a mess, just like everything else. My farm is a disaster right now. Okay, anyways, and then I also give her some sunflower seeds for a little extra protein and it adds vitamin E, which helps her milk to taste better. And so I'll give her that. And then I do give her just a little bit of oats. These are rolled. Rolled oats. Put a little of that in there and mix it all up. I thought I'd make a little video showing you guys my milking routine. So it's nothing fancy, but it's very simple. So what I start off doing is I get my grain ready, have it outside of the pen here, and then I get my halter and lead and I go and catch Penelope. She's usually either waiting at the gate for me or if she's not, then I call her in. She comes when she's called because she knows she's gonna get grain and she's highly grain motivated. In the summertime, if I'm moving her to a new spot, I don't even have to put a halter on her. She'll just follow me with a bucket. But anyways, I get her caught and I tie her up to a post. If it's too muddy here or icy here or whatever, then I can pretty much tie her anywhere else on the farm, either to the hitching rail or even to a tree. She's such a good cow that you can pretty much milk her anywhere you want to. Then I use this plastic curry comb. You can use whatever kind of stiff bristled brush that you want to use. And I just use it to get all of the hay, dirt, straw, mud, poop, whatever, all of that stuff off of her before I milk her so that nothing is floating around into the milk as I'm milking. Stray hairs and such like that as she moves around or if the wind is blowing, those are things that can get in the milk. So brushing her just kind of prevents a lot of that from happening. Of course, when you're milking into a bucket by hand, a little bit of things in the milk is kind of inevitable, but we want to avoid 
as much as we can. Then I personally use just a bucket of warm water and um, Dawn dish soap or sunlight or whatever. And I use that to clean off her teats and her udder area if it's dirty. And I just use a cloth, just an old rag, and I use a new section of the rag for each teat. I don't really use any teat dips or anything like that, that's just my personal preference. If you have something that you like to use with your cow, go for it, but that's just what I do. Then I give her her grain in her bucket. Um, I don't really love giving cows grain when I'm milking because I find it can make them impatient and they do fidget around a lot more. She actually will stand quite nice for me without grain, so I prefer to give grain after milking, but the reason I haven't been is I have been running a little bit short on time and it takes her quite a bit of time to eat her grain. So it's just easier if I can kill two birds with one stone and give her her grain while I milk. And she gets enough grain that it takes her most of the milking session to finish it off anyway, and then she's done. I'm pretty much just milking out three quarters now. After Penelope got mastitis in that front quarter, pretty much dried up. I mean, I can still get a couple squirts out of it, maybe like half a cup worth of milk. So I do just milk it out just to be on the safe side, get all the stuff out of it just in case there's anything left. But I think we got the mastitis pretty much under control and cleared up. But regardless, even though I am only milking three quarters, She's still giving us about a gallon, sometimes a gallon and a half of milk, which is more than enough for our family still. So I'm happy with that. When she has her calf next year, and she is freshly in lactation, we should probably be getting quite a bit more milk than that. And hopefully that quarter will produce again just fine. So we'll have to wait and see, but I have I hope for that. One thing I forgot to mention was before I start milking into my bucket each milking session, I always strip out two to three squirts of milk out of the teats first. That's usually the highest bacteria count is that first little bit of milk. So I get rid of that, just milk it out onto the ground. And then I milk into my bucket. I have a stock pot that I found at a garage sale with a lid stainless steel stock pot and I dump the milk into that occasionally as I'm milking. The reason why I do that is one, it keeps it clean, but two, and the most important thing, is that if she does kick my milk bucket over, I don't lose all my milk. I still have some in my stainless steel stock pot, so that's what I use. After I'm done milking her, then I usually put bag balm on her teats. I almost forgot <laughs> this time. And the bag balm, especially in the winter, it really helps them to prevent uh, getting frostbite on their teats and their udder. So I just put it on her teats, just a little bit. You don't need a whole lot. I keep it in my pocket so it stays kind of warm while I'm milking. And it's also got a little bit of antimicrobial, antiseptic type properties to it. So that helps as well. I put that on her. And then after I'm done, then I let her back out into her pen. And I usually give her the last little bit of grain as a treat after milking. The final step in my milking process is to take the milk in the house and strain it into my one gallon jars. I use a stainless steel coffee filter. I know some people like to use milk filters and your process for straining your milk is on you. This is just what I do, so you do what you're comfortable with. You might hear my baby in the background. He's watching Miss Rachel. And I will say, if it weren't for her, I don't think I'd be able to milk a cow by myself. Thank goodness for her. I put Miss Rachel on, take the baby monitor out with me, and I milk my cow. So that is my process, guys. Thanks for watching. <laughs>